Oh, and another one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Profile time, and uh, this week, well, who else? It's Craigie Brook. No, <laughs> <it's me. laughs> boom! It's it's the best man to have ever managed in Manchester. Sven. It's Robert. No, <laughs> Sven got Sven. him. <laughs> it's 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 Alexander Chapman Ferguson, sir, sir oh. Alexander Chapman Ferguson. Of course, we. I mean, we couldn't do anything else, could we? No, no. good couldn't enough do. for a night of the realm. Our hands, enough, our hands were tied. Our hands are always tied because that's the regime Pete likes to uh, implement. <laughs> <finish>. Thank you <laughs> for yeah. finishing that. Um, uh, Gordon Bennett yeah, he was born on the 31st of December 1941 26 years before the summer of love he was in his peak during that summer yeah I'd one, say he was one, one, yeah. one <laughs> playing for Dunfermline then playing for Dunfermline uh, and Rangers as well he went, so, mm. yeah. um, actually had a very good scoring record well, he, he did yeah I mean but, but you know one of the greatest football managers of all time and possibly the greatest in the modern era a lad from Govan in Glasgow yeah um, you're right Jim his playing career is uh, often overlooked for obvious reasons because his managerial <laughs> career was so blooming marvellous but he, he played for a number of Scottish teams uh, Queen's Park St Johnson uh, Dunfermline Rangers Falkirk and Air United and scored goals wherever he went um, his goal scoring record Dunfermline was particularly good yes mm. 60 in the league 66 and 89 mm. and the 65 66 season he finished joint top scorer in the league with 31 goals um, so yeah, he, he was a goal scorer, um, and his style of play was he was he was quite um, he, he was quite elbowy. <laughs> I'd say combative. Yeah, quite well saying. Yeah, it, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, all elbows. He, apparently, he used to run a pub um, called Fergie's, which had a I think the bar was called the Elbow Room or something. Oh, was like it? That. Yeah. I know. I know. He managed a pub when he was manager of St Mirren. Was it St Mirren? Yeah, I th I th it was in the early days. Of I don't think it was called. Cool. I thought it was, was called Shorts. Manchester United. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that was that came a bit later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think I think it was when he was at St Mirren. I think it was a particularly rough pub. I, I, there was. Oh, it would have been. Yeah. In his autobiography, he talks about it getting into fights and all sorts. Yeah. Like glass smashing everywhere. Uh -huh. and stuff. He finished playing at the age of thirty-two and uh, soon got into management with East Sterling, uh, which was on a part-time basis. Uh, but he soon began stamping his authority on the team. Uh, I got a reputation for being a disciplinarian quite early on. And one of the, the East Stony players, um, Bobby McCulley, said of Ferguson, I've never been more afraid of anyone before. Um, <laughs> Ferguson, he was a right frightening bastard from the start. Wow. Well, <laughs> uh, I mean, only 32 as well. Yeah, that's... that's <laughs> I can't even comprehend that. No. Yeah. Don't, Jim. Don't. I'm frightened of it. <laughs> uh, he wasn't there for long um, before he joined St Mirren, which is where the young Ferguson would be for the next four years. Uh, and when he took over, they were down the bottom of Scotland's third tier in, in the second division. And Ferguson got them promoted uh, to the top flight after, uh, obviously, two promotions. They won the, the old first division. Yeah, he, when well. he took over, they were a really, really young team, weren't they, as well? I, think, I remember him saying he was particularly proud of, of that team and what they achieved because well, they were so young. Yeah, I mean, the, the incredible thing about Ferguson is that he really has turned round teams wherever he's gone. I mean, okay, East Sterling it wasn't quite, but that was his first one. Mm. Whereas even at St Mirren, when he was in his early 30s, you could see what a, a class act he was turning out to be. Mm. Uh, and there's a there's a lovely story from his St Mirren days. It was a pre-season match in Guyana for some reason. St Mirren were, were were playing, and they were getting some rough treatment from the opposition, and the ref wasn't doing much about it. And I think this was quite early on in Ferguson's tenure there. And the front man Bobby Torrance was getting some particularly bruising attention, and Ferguson was a bit concerned. And Ferguson is 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 really the master of bringing teams together mm. and, and really saying right you know I'm going to look after you but mm. as long as you perform for me kind of mm. thing mm. and I think this is one of his real early acts of that he saw that they were getting rough treatment and they were not having a good time so uh, at half time Ferguson brought himself on and uh, he basically said enough's enough uh, and in his uh, autobiography he, he wrote of the incident said in the first contest for a cross I exacted a bit of revenge on the centre half whose squeals caused the referee to point at me ominously the confrontation became fierce until I nailed Torrance's abuser perfectly as he rolled about like a dying man the referee sent me off <laughs> My God! So I'm, I'm glad he used the word "like" there. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's imagine that though. Like, if you were a forward, a young forward, and you're getting abuse, and your manager basically going, "Leave him to me, son," and he nails him. It's a pre-season friendly. Yeah, you'd, you'd think, man, he's really looking out for us. Or and he's that's a what, psychopath. Well, but a lot of the players said that that really bonded them. They thought, "My goodness, this guy really." Really wants to win. Well, he really wants to win, but it, it wasn't so much of that. It was this guy's really—he gives a damn about us and mm. gives a damn about the team, you know. 
it's, it's a quite a sensational act, really. Well, they, they, they would be loving that, wouldn't they? I mean, yeah. You know, imagine how you'd feel if your if they, your boss took up for you in that way, exactly at that level, you exactly. Know? Yeah, go into the trenches for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, he ended up being sacked by St Mirren due to a breach of contract, um, and there's some sort of grey bits and pieces flying around that that uh, time, but uh, which we'll probably leave there. <laughs> well, there was even though it happened ages ago. <laughs> well, it was sort of alleged that he'd kind of agreed to join Aberdeen before leaving St Mirren blah 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 but as I say the, the St Mirren they, uh, the official line is they sacked him due to a breach of contract which is strange to think of Ferguson getting sacked from somewhere yeah. <laughs> uh, but he went to, to Aberdeen at the time um, Aberdeen were a big side but it, you know, even back then uh, Scottish football was dominated by Rangers and Celtic but this was where Ferguson took it to another level mm. where everyone thought well, hang on a minute this, this guy knows what he's doing um, Aberdeen hadn't won a trophy for 20 odd years um, and in the 79-80 season Aberdeen be- became the first team other than Rangers or Celtic to win the Scottish League for 15 years mm. as you said earlier Jim he, he broke up that duopoly mm. which is incredible as anybody knows <laughs> anything about the Scottish football will testify to started to become known as a new firm didn't they them and another team yeah uh, he won three league titles in total at Aberdeen which is crazy I just thought he won the one or yeah. he just win three in, in you know the, the, the years he was there four Scottish Cups one league cup the Cup Winners Cup famously beaten Real Madrid in the final and they even won the Super Cup as well dominated with yeah. Aberdeen yeah, it's well, the, the, Cup, the Cup Winners Cup team uh, obviously McLeish and Miller centre backs mm. were brilliant like, yeah. they keep, they're the re- basically the reason that Alan Hansen didn't have hardly as many uh, Scottish right. caps as you'd think Got, obviously Wee Gordy was in there yeah. as a young man Gordon Strachan uh, Brian Gunn on the bench is that right? yeah no. yeah yeah, flipping hey. all sorts. Um, uh, after the cup final win against Rangers in 1983, Ferguson really let his players have it. They'd, they'd won the cup winners' cup and then they won the Scottish Cup, and they were celebrating after a, a cup double. Um, and Eric Black, who scored the winning goal that day, said, "We were mm. celebrating in the dressing room when the door was flung open. He was going mad and said those levels were unacceptable. Um, without a doubt, there was fear in, in you know in the Aberdeen players. He said that was what he wanted to instil. You either climbed the peaks with him or you disappeared. It was a constant test and a constant demand. And that Real Madrid team, obviously managed by uh, De Stefano as well. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, but, it's good but isn't that incredible? They've just won the Scottish yeah, Cup. That's what he's all about. Yeah. Didn't you say Gary Neville was like that? Yeah, Gary Neville, Gary Neville is was like that. Was, was basically took such a lead from Ferguson that he became. Like that, didn't he, Gary yeah, he Neville? did. It, everywhere in the dressing room, you know, they'd say, you know, England after beating Germany five one. Um, I think that was. Wasn't was it most sure famously on, after the, each leg of the treble they won? Yeah, years, after the FA Cup final yeah. when they beat Newcastle United two nil, they were celebrating. He was like, "Oi, don't celebrate! We've still got work to do." Yeah, and obviously he got that from Ferguson. Um, he was awarded an OBE when he was at Aberdeen. Was 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 Fergie? Um, and was also on the coaching staff for Scotland under the great Jock Steen. Steen infamously, infamously uh, died right after World Cup qualifier, collapsing on the touchline and died in hospital a short time later, which was obviously a, a shockingly bad time for Ferguson and Scottish football mm. in general. Um, and uh, Ferguson took charge of the national team, got them to the finals in Mexico, but couldn't get past the, the first round. To be fair, they were in a group with the excellent Danish side in West Germany and Uruguay. So Hadn't he been part of the coaching staff? He had been, yeah. 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 Um, and In his autobiography, he uses quite a lot of that time to have a go Alan Hansen does he? Yeah. <laughs> what's he saying? <laughs> well, he says that Hansen uh, didn't like playing for Scotland, only liked playing for Liverpool. Yeah. And Hansen used to check himself out of like squads apparently to go back to Liverpool and say and to get treatment. Mm. He, would, he refused to be like assessed or treated by the Scottish doctors because he always wanted to be in Liverpool. Well, you get the impression sometimes when Hansen's on the match of the day sofa and they're talking about Fergus, and there's there is a little bit of something there, isn't mm. there? Oh, yeah. It's, it's nice to see the shoe on the other foot as well with Fergie. Yeah, <laughs> he's always complaining about national football. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He should not. Because <laughs> at the time he managed the, the Scottish team, he was also Aberdeen manager, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So he had to get Big Archie in, didn't he? Mm. He did. He got Big Archie in. And it wouldn't be the first time. No. Nah. It, would, it wouldn't be the first time. Um, uh, uh, you mean the last time? Sorry, yeah. yeah that's it, what it, I mean. It would the, be the first yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, after the World Cup, he was offered many um, positions at various clubs. Uh, but of course, he would go to Manchester United, the team that hadn't won the top flight championship in England since 1967. Ferguson took charge in November 1986. Um and it would be his fourth season at the club that, that Ferguson would win his first trophy for Manchester United at the time when he took over in the 80s there was a big drinking culture at the club the likes of Norman Whiteside and Paul McGrath being those two about the centre of it he, those, apparently those two were so bad mm. that people were ringing from the pubs going home or using the pub phone mm. to ring the club 
Mm. Say, can we speak to Alex Ferguson? These two are in here, they're a nightmare. They, they also once gave an interview on telly, drunk. And Fer- can you imagine I think, that now? I think, I think at that point, Ferguson took him into his office and said, look, you've got, mm. you've got to go. Well, Ferguson appointed Archie so, Knox as his assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it done. Yeah. <laughs> That's like Rio Ferdinand being hammered on TV. Mm. Like, it's just unfathomable now. Well, we, yeah, during we, the we, season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, at one point, like McGrath. I mean, we've talked about McGrath on the show before. Well, we've inducted him. Ferguson says at like length about McGrath and how it he tried. He was. Yeah, but he said at one point, like McGrath was training, he just couldn't even run. He was t- just drunk. So this was because yeah. McGrath was such a great player. Yeah. Well, at least yeah. McGrath went on to have a few yeah. good years at yeah, Northern Ireland. You know, his white side retired from injury, didn't he? So he didn't yeah. really get a chance to fill his potential anyway. Yeah, that's but right. But like, McGrath was doing stuff like putting themselves out of squads and stuff, saying he was unfit. You know, and and when he wasn't really. And um, for his uh, first season at Manchester United, he well, the reason I was wanting to mention that story is just oh, okay. because just to give you an idea of the scale of the job that Ferguson had on his hands when he took over, because <clears> there was a, like a, as you say, a mass, like Brian Robson was bad as well. Yeah, he? well, he yeah. managed to sort Robson out. Yeah, but he, what I was going to say is, in his first season at the club, they finished eleventh. Hmm. Um, and uh, with the, the drinking culture that was going on, um, with they didn't have the, they had some decent players, but eleventh finish it wasn't too inspiring. Mm. His second season, they finished second, they improved it drastically. But then his third season, they, they dropped back down to eleventh, and the fourth season, they finished thirteenth. Mm. Now, in this day and age, as it's well said and well documented, that he would have never been given the time. And they, I mean, after the sort of second to eleventh and, and then thirteenth, they would have probably parted ways with him. Um, but it was during these seasons he started to build his side and bring the likes of Steve Bruce and, and Brian McClay would be with him for, for, for many years um, apparently uh, another nice little one uh, pre-season story was uh, a match in the late 80s Manchester United took to the field against Somerset County Cricket Club for, for some reason uh, and Ferguson and Big Archie Knox came on wow <laughs> yeah Big Archie scored apparently it's the only time uh, Alex Ferguson actually played for Manchester United in some way yeah <clears throat> now the 89-90 uh, season, there was big talk of Ferguson being sacked if results were to continue to be poor. And the team hadn't been performing for a while. Uh, he'd been there a few years without much success. And it all went down to that game, didn't it, in the third round of the FA Cup when they were away to, to Nottingham Forest. Had they have lost that, there was big talk that he would have been sacked. Uh, a famous Mark Robbins goal won the match and United marched on. Um, and it, people say that it's the most important goal of, of Alex Ferguson, Sir yeah. Alex Ferguson's career. I mean, people I'm, at the club have said, oh, that's not the case, his job wasn't in... Well, Jim, I know. met Mark Robbins, and yeah. I said to him, I hear you scored the most important goal of Sir Alex Ferguson's career, and he said, yep, yeah, apparently that's true, so I can confirm <laughs> on the show that and that is true. why would he lie? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, there, absolutely no reason to lie. Yeah, they won the FA Cup that year, and the Ferguson stayed. The, the, the uh, zero trophy winning Mark Robbins. That's right. Mm. Uh, the following season, they finished six, but won the Cup Winners' Cup with Mark Hughes scoring in, in the final. Now we get into the nineties, and this is where United really started to come together. The, they finished second when Leeds won um, the league, uh, and then of course ninety two ninety three season was the first of the Premiership years, and Manchester United won the first of of their many titles under Ferguson. Eric mm. Cantona brought in uh, Andrew Konchelskis was there younger players uh, Lee Sharp and then Giggs was just coming in as well and it was just a new look United it really was and they were so exciting um, and for this was and, and this really began that, that glorious period um, in Manchester when they were they, I mean they're the, one of the biggest clubs in the world now but they were still building then mm. Even in the sort of early mid nineties, they were an enormous club, but they weren't a European heavyweight. Didn't, didn't they with only their go lace up, up collar? Yeah, didn't yeah. they only go up to? Uh, didn't they only go up up for uh, Cantona because they couldn't sign David Hurst and um, Alan Shearer? They say he, I think he was in for Hurst. Yeah, yeah. But we didn't get him. Yeah, uh, but and this was when stories with with younger players like Giggs and Sharp were coming out, and Ferguson was like a father figure to many at that club. The story of um, that Ferguson was at a dinner party in his tux or something like that, and he gets wind that Lee Sharp and Ryan Giggs are having a house party. Yeah, and it's they the night before, house, yeah, yeah. And it's the night before the game, and so he leaves the dinner party, turns up, and just uh, and, and, and gets Quite everybody out of the house. Yeah, yeah. In that day and age, how on earth did he know that? He well, might, he would have had people tipping him off. I know, but who are these his, people? We must have such a comprehensive be, network to his, know what his, his plans are up to like that. He's basically full of that sort of stuff. He'd probably he probably smell Lee Sharp's barbecue. He's an old joke. He's an after show. An old joke. But he, he, like, he, he maintains in his autobiography that he's friends with, he was friends with all the bouncers, all the nightclubs. Yeah. He, he had scouts everywhere. He, yeah. he, he literally, had, you know, he, he had knew just about everyone in the whole area. You know, he, he was so so switched on to that stuff. And you'd be right though. But in an era before mobile phones and stuff. 
it's pretty impressive and they wouldn't have expected to rock up but, oh no that is so far above and beyond the Call of yeah. Duty it's how brilliant. terrified yeah. how, how, how it, terrified you would think he was supernatural after a little while he wouldn't have even needed to have said anything no. Giggs and Sharp would have just gone everybody out now <laughs> in my head that, that could be remade into House Party 3 <laughs> and Giggs and Sharp could play Kid and Play and, and Alex Ferguson could play uh, Kid's Dad I think <laughs> As you say, Marcus, you just kick everyone out of the house and just start doing laps around the garden to punish yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, indeed. Um, it, it's just absolutely incredible. Um, so, it, so they were growing in, in the 90s very much so. Um, and uh, 93, 94, saw the first League and Cup double that um, Ferguson won for, for United. And then Keno. And then he brought in a 22-year-old Roy Keane. Mm. But, but again, I th- one of the great achievements of Alex Ferguson that many people have said is the fact that he would suddenly change the squad from mm. one year and he sold uh, famously Kinchelskis, Ince and Hughes three of their big players and brought in the youngsters of Beckham, Neville, Button um, Skulls we didn't know who they were and the first day of the season they get beaten 3-1 away to Villa and everyone's going what the hell is going on and of mm. course they end up winning was that 95-96 95-96 yeah, yeah. and that's when he mixed 95-96 Peter yeah um, but in 93-94 they bossed that season they, they did, they it, did. Yeah. but 95-96 but exactly so then the, you know Blackburn win the league yeah. and then he you know, rejuvenates the squad almost, and, and, and gets out some of the, mm. the, the, the the good players. This is the thing; it wasn't yeah. like oh, they were old. But yeah, in their peak as well. Yeah, he wasn't afraid to do that, and he put in young players who nobody'd heard of, which is an incredibly ballsy move. I can't think of it, that happening in, in any other time, really. No, that's not got, at that scale, at least. That's no. got to go down as his biggest achievement. And the biggest achievement being where he. he just builds team after team exactly yeah. he knows there's a life cycle of a team uh-huh. he knows in, almost intuitively when to break it up and start another one again but that's, and he does it over and over again but so many managers would try and patch up a team mm. yeah he yeah. doesn't he there's rebuilds. me spine there's, I've got that you yeah, know, I've exactly. got that in the bank and it's like, it doesn't always work but also no. that he's also done that without really by anyone else's stance any sort of transitional season they've yeah. never finished lower, lower than third no. in the Premier League yeah. so he, he's always competed mm. when they you know when they won the League Cup and that was all they won it felt like a consolation prize because yeah. for a team of that stature mm-hmm. winning, a, winning that stature, trophy yeah. almost doesn't count as winning a trophy that's, yeah. that's incredible um, during the 90s he also started his feud with Arsene Wenger yep. which was quite good fun um, I did love it because Ferguson was he, he became you know Mr Premiership or Mr Premier League didn't he mm. and uh, Wenger came along and was obviously great for Arsenal um, and would would sometimes criticise a few things here and there wasn't afraid to speak his mind in those early days well to a lesser extent now um, and I think he was he was criticising the league or saying there should be this implemented in English football something like that and they asked Ferguson Ferguson <laughs> I'll never say never forget he said uh, about Wenger he said well He's come from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> he should keep his mouth shut, firmly shut. Did That's it? what he said. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> the wow. disrespect in his voice. I think he's. I think Ring has got his respect now, though, hasn't he? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah. well, I think they've softened towards each other as Arsenal are less of a threat. Yeah, mm. um, but also, I mean, as they've got older, because you know, you, you look back at some of the things Ferguson used to say. He mm. was, you know, he, he very much has softened in like the past five yeah. years or so. He used to, oh God, he's he still an infuriating bastard, even at the end. Of, <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you're playing, if you're yeah, playing against I, him, I really th- that is so true. But it was so much more the case, like <laughs> back in the day. I, I thought like. Fergus used to really really wind me up and I thought that's me just being sort of young and immature and then I was looking back at some of the things he's done and the quotes mm. that he's come mm. out with he's like no he, said, he knows exactly what he's doing yeah. <laughs> he's, he doesn't know well, I think, know who I am and he succeeded in mind games yeah. <laughs> oh, we'll, never, we'll never forgive him for, Ke- for Keegan <laughs> that's that season oh, when he wound up Keggy the season before yeah he yeah. wasn't just having to go at Keegan he was having to go at Stuart Pearce as well yeah. and calling into question his professionalism yeah so. everyone remembers that don't they <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stuart Pearce is on the telly yeah. oh, talking well, about it um, uh, anyway throughout the 90s you, you I'm know, not sure we've dwelt on that long enough what's that Keegan, Keegan. I think we have <laughs> that's <laughs> where the downward spiral started <laughs> <laughs> no, the downward spiral started when he got punched and they cut the charity oh, shield yeah. was it the charity shield it was a lay by yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. um, anyway it was with a baseball bat. oh sorry um, uh, but back to Ferguson um, uh, he was building United obviously they, they, they were the best team in England but they weren't the best team in Europe they weren't even a force in Europe to begin with 
obviously England was still had a bit of a hangover from the five year ban after mm-hmm. the Heisel Stadium disaster and, and the and, drinking culture um, yeah. uh, and so and just not being that good yeah <laughs> well the, the, no, we were right 96 not Euro 96 and all that we weren't too bad we weren't too bad but, uh, but, but club football there, there wasn't too much to write home about apart from Arsenal's cup winners cup win mm. Jim um uh, and some other good performances but uh, United they weren't at the level that they wanted to be in Europe in, in the Champions League um, and I mean they would I should remember them going to the, the new camp and being beaten 4-0 mm, you yeah. know these kind of things they mm. weren't uh, a force but Ferguson turned that around and they got better and better and they started getting to the quarterfinals and the semi-finals and then of course in 1999 the, the treble happened and in fact, what they a were, season they were such a, a force at that time that even when they went they went 1-0 down in like the 6th minute didn't they against Bayern against Bayern in the final I just knew they were going to win the mm. whole way through I knew they would win well, it's, it's, it's just the way they pulled it as out as Clive Tilsley said you know United they score they always score yeah. was the, there was the thing he said right at the death but Bayern Munich, I mean you Bayern Munich were a better team they're a better team for most of the game yeah you know, and, and it came and, it, and that's why it was such a I, I, well, I thought they were a better team anyway and, and, and that's why you see this I mean it's obviously difficult to um to, to, to take for a Bayern Munich player anyway but you see the, the emotion mm. like, like the Mateus like oh, yeah. you know and, and Sammy Kafour and stuff it, it was crazy but, but that United side Sammy Kafour is still on that pitch oh he's punching <laughs> it punching it yeah. but that United side you know that, that midfield Skulls um, I know Skulls and King didn't play but they were uh, the main two in the middle for that treble winning season well the big performance was in, in, in Turin against Juventus yeah. in the semi the yeah, away yeah, leg yeah, yeah. Where they were just they refused to lose, and King no, was no, well, they refused to not win. Yeah, well, King just lost it. He knew he wasn't a Mister Final. He just he mm. just drove them on. You know, mm. they, they, that was the standout performance of that yeah, campaign yeah. for me. Well, and, and it was you know Giggs, Beckham, Skulls, and uh, and Keen. I mean, he signed Keen when he was young, but the three players that he brought through there I mean just absolutely magnificent um, and, he, and he set up a lovely couple of strike partnerships as well Cole and York and, and Shearer mm. uh, Shearer Sheringham and Solskjaer he's always that, had good strikers yeah, yeah. He, he likes having four top strikers doesn't he that's, um, that's his that's a real archetype of the great Oh, sorry, a hallmark of the great teams he's had. There's always four quality strikers or think, forward players at least. Like we, you know, when he had sort of Ronaldo and um, Tevez and mm. Rooney and he's always yeah whatnot uh, together. Um, well, in, in inter- well I, th- I think it's I think it's an important point because I think that if you look back through his his successful time at United, mo- they've never struggled for strikers or goals. No. They've always scored goals. And, and they've scored he, goals and he, everywhere. And he's mm. built the infrastructure and he's built a team and a success uh, route and a success uh, kind of. Um, he's got won so many medals that um, really top strikers don't mind really sitting on the bench for mm. the odd game. You know yeah. what I mean? And he apart kind of has Rooney. that respect. Apart from Rooney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, he's English. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the mad thing with the Rooney thing, isn't it? It's like you can't really be the top dog at a club like United. No, they're too no. big. Well, they, you exactly. can't just have one standout player. The standard's he, too high. He made the. Cl- I mean, they've had such big names, but the, he's made that club bigger than any player mm. yeah that that um, ethos that, that's there which is what's all his creation about it now will they go back to being like a, a normal club now well I think again with David Moyes being in charge I think it's a good appointment I think he um, very much breeds that as well it, yeah 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 they, I mean they, you get the impression they're both sort of left wing boys from Glasgow yeah they're not going to stand for any big time Charlie's coming in and that was perhaps one of the reasons why he got rid of Paul Ince when maybe you could argue he got rid of Beckham Ruud van Nistelrooy you know and again he's not he's not afraid to make those calls if he's he not thinks, afraid to kick a boot at somebody <laughs> someone's head well, it, we, we, well we go into the noughties and um, there was talk of him retiring it's mm. crazy isn't it yeah. it was 10 years ago whatever it was um, United really undermined their campaign didn't it, it uh, well United they kept winning leagues but they had to wait a little bit longer for another Champions League um, but again he decided to, to break up that great side and it was Sal Yapstam and then obviously Beckham um, uh, and one or two others um, and he wasn't afraid of, of shaking up the team and bringing in some new signings and then the team that won the Champions League a few years on from that in 2008 was Ferguson thought his best side Ronaldo, Rooney and Tevez leading the attack and uh, you know one of Ferguson's best points is that he evolves um, yeah. tactically evolves he moves with the time <coughs> he is in one sense he's an old school manager he likes to be in charge of a lot of things and delegate a lot of stuff but he likes to oversee everything from mm. you know probably from how the receptionist greets you as you walk yeah. into the club to how the youth policy is to who's coming in and who's the starting eleven on the day their style of play doesn't seem to change that drastically though does it no it's it doesn't it's just always attacking it's always 
clinical. Yeah. So those are the basic fundaments of it. And he's exactly. evolved, adapted it in such a way so often that you don't notice mm. the transitions happening. And, but the, it, and the amount of times you hear the old adage that, oh, you know, Manchester United are one of those teams that they're not playing very well, but they'll still win. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and that's not said about many teams in the last yeah. 10 years. They win when they're playing badly. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's such um, a great nod to Ferguson's. Um, you know, attitude that he's well because if you can win a cup and still get the hair dryer treatment afterwards then you know you're, well, you're going to have that instilled in you, aren't you? <laughs> that's right that's right I mean and also uh, you look at that say that side with Rooney, Ronaldo and Tevez leading the attack you know a very different team to the ones in the 90s you know he, he moved with the times he wasn't you know, he, you know, retaining his old fashioned sort of disciplinary attitude, but he wasn't just a four four two man. You know, how many managers do we see that when they're younger they were they were a lot better, and when they get a little bit older, you know, the same could be said for maybe like Brian Clough. You know, in his latter years, he, he wasn't quite the same. They, they they tend to kind of cling on to previous generations yep. and, and previous generational tactical formations and attitudes, and don't move with the times. I mean, Ferguson. You know, he was managing in the seventies for crying out loud, and then now he's dealing with what well, was dealing with player agents, with sponsorship deals, with all mm. this kind of malarkey. Twenty four hour media, all exactly. That sort of stuff. But he de- he dealt with it Horses. like no other, yeah, but like no other manager ever has done. Um, and Two thousand eight was the highlight of his career. Yeah, when winning he went, no, when he got beat at the quarter final of the UFA Cup against Portsmouth. Is that- <laughs> <laughs> Got that's, it in that's there. That's what I remember him for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for coming, Luke. At Old Trafford. See you, <laughs> See you next. Right, I let myself out. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about his son now? Yeah, no, oh, we no, can't. No, no, no. Sons. Um, uh, but uh, <laughs> imagine if he unveiled Darren Ferguson as his successor. Oh, that would be brilliant. <laughs> um, Oof. Uh, they, of course, they won the Champions League in, in 2008. Uh, With a John Terry missed pen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just how everyone would like to win it. <laughs> 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 it wasn't the side even though. if he's not involved you have him on as a guest penalty taker yeah. mm. right you know what to do JT <laughs> <laughs> two more Champions League finals were reached but they were beaten by possibly the greatest team in the modern era Yeah. so we, we let him off that's very kind of us I mean um, that's the thing Ferguson's often said isn't it that he feels he should have won more, more uh, in, in Europe but I mean, it's so difficult to win that competition yeah. we see that every season but so, every year they were they were challenging well I, th- I think that's what you, I, I think that that's what makes Ferguson the greatest British manager of all time and puts him above Paisley is, is that yes Paisley won three European Cups but if you look at the, the nature of the competition then and now there are a few things which make the European Cup hard to win back in those days mm. the sort of lack of knowledge about other teams different facilities mm-hmm. when you go away difficult travel that sort of stuff mm. but generally the, the Champions League is much more competitive yeah. and so given he's got his 13 titles and two European Cups for me I think Paisley won 13 trophies in 9 years 13 major trophies in 9 mm. years which is obviously amazing but for me that's why Ferguson gets it pipped despite him winning yeah. only 2 yeah. it's so difficult to win it's so competitive and they were in two finals as well. As, uh, yeah. that, you know that counts which, for which something. Could have gone on. Yeah, they probably weren't in. Well, also you could say Paisley took over from the great work Shankly did, whereas Ferguson yeah. built the house out. himself. Yeah. yeah, took over from what Ron Atkinson did. <laughs> 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 Very different, yeah. big Ron. Um, and, and another thing that that Ferguson will be remembered for is that. Uh, Whoever came up against him in the Premier League, he would always be the winner in the end. Mm. Um, we've had Wenger, we've had Mourinho, and obviously Mancini all won a few battles against him. But Ferguson well, amazing, would always it? Ferguson would always win the war. But F- Ferguson bowing out at Old Trafford, Mancini gets sacked. Yeah. It, almost, it's almost like they're like they're linked. Like, yeah. Mancini's had four days to enjoy that news. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't wait for the next. Thing. What do you mean I'm sacked? <laughs> 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 God's sake! Yeah. What am I getting the you're not? No, okay, right. Yeah. The way he sort of says, uh, "Will everyone stop talking about, uh, talking about my success?" And my club should have denied this. I was thinking, nobody's talking about your success. Everyone's talking about Alex Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, nobody's talking about your investment. <laughs> yeah. But you are getting sacked. Yeah. Yeah. He also said, "If they're getting it, uh, if they're getting someone else in, then I must be stupid." <laughs> <laughs> Bit <laughs> um, but Mancini was was one of those few who managed to wrestle the title away from Ferguson but he always got it back mm. he always <laughs> got it back Mourinho had him going for a season or two and, and Wenger did as well but um, there was always a sort of grudging respect between Ferguson and Mourinho though Oh, a lot of respect, actually. Not, uh, certainly from uh, Mourinho's point of view. I mean, didn't he always calls him the boss or th- something mm. like that? Yeah, he? he started off not making a bit of a splash, and after that, he became quite deferential. He yeah. knew. He knew. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, I mean, yeah. I mean, Manchester City, with all their millions, put a superb team together, and, and they won the league. But Ferguson would have never left with City. Um, as the best team in, in, in Manchester let alone the land so he made sure that they won it back at the first time of asking and, and bowed out with 49 trophies including 13 Premier League titles 
He, and also, it's worth you know pointing out. He, his stated aim was to knock Liverpool off their perch, and which, that he did, uh, which is which such a seemed bold, impossible. I mean, what a claim! Uh, I know. Just just <laughs> concentrate on. Yeah, I think I'm going to do as best we can. Maybe we can nick a league title. No, he had the big boys in his sights. And yeah, I, li- I also like that. Um, there's a great interview that the BBC put up on their website around the week. I think that he was appointed United manager, mm. and he ends the interview by saying something like, "Oh, you know, if, if we all work hard, we'll be all right." And it was like it's so prescient because yeah. like, what he went on to achieve is, is astounding, mm. you know. Yeah, he knew. Yeah, he knew back then. One of the few interviews they could actually show. <laughs> <laughs> Found but one when he was talking to the BBC. That one. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, Sir Alex Ferguson was, well, and still is really Manchester United. You know, for his twenty six, twenty seven years there, he made them into the biggest club in the world. Mm. Which is unbelievable. I mean, people forget that that they were not this big club. They've always no, been I a mean, big they, club. Yeah, they had their sort of glory days in the past, but they they weren't the f- global phenomenon they are. They're, right. they're an institution. Well, they? exactly, and and Globally. they were the biggest club in the world. An argument could be made that Real Madrid and Barcelona have perhaps taken them over, but at the end of the nineties well, and all, they were. To put it into perspective, to be a professional manager and manage over two thousand games at any level yeah. is mad. For him to do such a big percentage mm-hmm. of those at United at the very, very top level mm. is so is so impressive. Mm. It's unbelievable. We may never see the like again. No. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and like I said, you know, he was very much from yesteryear with regards to his attitude and kind of his aura, but his tactical awareness and footballing mind was was of, of all eras, which ensured he was successful in in, in every um, in every generation that he competed in. Uh, mm. Just a remarkable, certainly one of, and for many the greatest manager of, of all time, um, Sir Alex Ferguson into the team. <laughs> <laughs> 